Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindled brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no one has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in their ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like the one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden, hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thank, be to God. thanks be to God. Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you are that you are you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them the bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Okay. A reading from Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. should 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds and from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig, fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, either the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert. For you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work. And commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm glad to see your faces. I love that we have the ability to connect this way. You know, I have... Um, lots of colleagues and we're always sharing about how we are doing Sunday church. Um, some are pre-recording and then posting on YouTube. Um, and some are doing really cool productions of their services and announcements and all of that. But I find that this way, at least for me, feels a lot more personal where we get to connect and, you know, I can still like you're sitting in the, in the pews, I can see your, your head, your head's nodding and we get to have a chat and talk with one another. So I'm really thankful for this technology. You know, I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. I am betting that for most of us, this was a very different Thanksgiving. You know, we weren't able to gather with large groups of family and friends like we normally do. We probably made a smaller, maybe lighter meal. <laughs> Iffy, I see you, Amy, here. <laughs> 
maybe we indulged a little bit more because really, why not? <laughs> As we come to this Sunday, we are starting the season of Advent. And that is a little strange because this is the church new year. And a lot of us have been, you know, done with 2020 for a long time. But if we were to say this is the beginning of next year and we're still right where we are, none of us really are ready for that either, you know, because we really want 2020 to be the end of this. And it's it's been hard, you know, and we're looking at the next four weeks and a Christmas that is also going to be very different. You know, again, we're not going to be able to gather the way we always have. And a lot of us are over it. We're tired of not being able to gather with our large families or our closest friends, or, you know, for some of us, we're not planning the Christmas parties we always have hosted, Judy Cheek. We are not, um, we're not able to do those things that we've always done. And the reality of that is hard because we so want to have whatever we consider normal. And many of us are probably identifying with Isaiah a little bit this morning, like, oh, that you would open the heavens and come down, like, come Lord Jesus, come fix it. Just come fix it. And then we hear Jesus saying, and this one kind of hit me hard this week, because keep awake, keep awake. And I want to delve into that a little bit. Um, Frank and I are blessed to be a part of a, a group of clergy that meet every Wednesday morning for a Bible study with the sole purpose of helping each other figure out what we're going to talk about on Sunday morning. It's Bible study for sermons. Chris and Les, I highly commend groups like this to you in your future. Um, because, you know, it, it's hard to do this for eons and eons and to, to try to keep something new and fresh and to discern what the Holy Spirit would say. And in that group is a Navy chaplain. And we were talking about this idea of keeping awake and having to stand guard and be on guard and on the lookout. And what does that mean for our service personnel around the world? Because when you are on watch, you don't get to sleep. You have to be on guard for things that are dangerous that could happen on the base, to the other troops, to the communities that you serve, and you have to be alert. And there is no rest for the weary. And it kind of made me think about what we're doing because we are all so weary. We're weary of this virus. We're weary of putting our lives on hold. We're weary of dealing with all of the stuff that we're having to deal with, the lack of normalcy, the lack of connection, the trying to figure out how to stay safe. And in the meantime, when we look on the news, it's so disheartening because what we're seeing is the numbers continuing to go up. Early this week, we had 28 hospitals in the state of Maryland that were at 90% capacity. After all we've done for so many months, this is where we still are. And that's hard. And we're being told to keep awake. And I want to encourage you to keep awake just like you are on watch. What do you need to do to keep yourself, your family, your friends, and your community safe? Because we're weary and we just want to sleep. We just want some rest and we can, I bet many of us are finding ourselves making some small concessions. You know, it's just this one friend. I haven't seen him in so long. It's just this one little gathering. It won't be very big. And we start taking risks for ourselves because we just want a break and we just want some sense of normal. So we try to create a sense of what we feel like normal should be 
and we make concessions. And essentially we are taking a step off that lookout post and we are moving into a place of denial and sleep because we need so desperately to just rest from the stress and the unknown. But I wanna encourage you that God is with you. And it, someone sent me a great email this week that was about a couple of um, newspaper articles about this time and how we can be so tempted to look back at what was and long for it or focus so much on being together again and in the future. And what we're missing is the gift that today can be. And maybe we need to take some time during this Advent to focus on today. What is, it, what is the gift that today can bring? Can we find one good thing? Can we find one thing to be happy about or look forward to? The sun is shining. It's cool outside today, but the sun is shining. Can you get outside and just take a walk or sit in the sun for a bit? Can you go for a drive? Can you, can you get out in a way so that you can feel like you have some normal, but feel and soak in the beauty of the world around us? This season of Advent is about preparing. It's the already and the not yet. God has already come once in Jesus who was born in a manger thousands of years ago. And the not yet, the promise that Jesus will come again. But let's focus on the Jesus here and now. Where is God at work in the world now? For many, many years, we have been busy and we get wrapped up in the decorating and the shopping and the parties and the cards and the gift wrapping and all the stuff. And I bet there have been years when we've said, maybe it's too much. Maybe this, maybe I shouldn't be doing this much. Maybe I need to take a step back. Well, this year is the forced step back and the ability to prioritize things during this Christmas season in ways that maybe we can have a new tradition start or find some new meaning in some small thing. This year, when you're putting up lights on the outside of your home or hanging a wreath on your front door, remember that that is a symbol to the world, that the light of the world is coming into the world. Remember that that is your, you shining the light of God in the darkness. There is a way that we can still be a beacon of light and hope in a world that feels very dark right now. And we're all having to make really, really tough decisions this Christmas season. But I would encourage you to stay awake and hold fast to those things that we know we need to do about Staying as isolated as you can. Staying socially distanced from others. If you're going to meet with others, be outside. Stay at least six to 10 feet apart, maybe even more. Keep, stay in small groups. For the love of Jesus and all things holy, wear your mask. Just do it. And until we figure out as a society how to take care of one another and respect the dignity of every human being and respect the livelihood of every human being by actually wearing our masks and washing our hands and staying home if we can and doing everything we can to help those healthcare workers that are dealing with capacities in hospitals that they've never seen before. What we can do is to stay alert and to stay true to these habits that we've been taught over these last eight and nine months and realize that this Advent is going to be very different. But there is hope because every day that we are given on this planet is a gift from God. And we have lots of memories where we can look back and remember all of those special times 
and we can look forward to special times again, but maybe this is our opportunity to figure out what are our priorities and how do we wanna spend our time? Now, each and every day, find that one good thing to be happy about, one good thing that will bring us joy and move through this season with intentionality that the light of the world is coming into the world once again. And we are the vehicle for that light shining in the darkness. It's our job to keep awake, hold the course, hold fast, stay steady, follow the rules, and all is okay. It doesn't seem like it some days, but it is. And we'll be together again soon. And in the meantime, we have a wonderful way to connect with one another. God bless you. Happy and holy Advent. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth, the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that your works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any kind of grief or trouble, especially our friends and family on Trinity's prayer list, that they may be delivered from their distress. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families, John Collins, Caleb and Ashley Copeland, Betty Crater, and Matthew, Jessica, Lincoln, and Brody Degner. We offer prayers for our frontline workers during this COVID-19 crisis. Nicole, John, Michelle, Beverly Ann, Vic, Randy, Joey, Jimmy, Kendall, Mark, Robin, Brian, Amelia, 
Josh, Adam, Sarah, Sarah, Corey, Catherine, Caitlin, Ben, Melanie, Jennifer, Caitlin, Kai, Joseph, Amy, Carl, Victoria, Victor, Becca, Mike, Allison, and Aiden. We offer prayers for our military and their families. Anthony, Lucas, Anna Marie, Chandler, Vincent, Brian, Jerome, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Mike, Kevin, Jerry, Danielle, and Luke. We offer prayers for our Herb, unfortunately, you got muted somehow. Sorry. Sorry about that. Where did I leave off? The college students? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We offer prayers for our college students. Martha, Zach, Virginia, Gabrielle, AJ, Anna, Joshua, JT, Lydia, Ashley, and Joe. Join me in the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your service. Our mission is to invite others to be a part of our community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And once again this morning, since we are unable to consecrate the sacrament during this time, Please join me in saying the, this prayer, which acknowledges our dependence on the presence of Jesus in our lives. In union, O Lord, with the faithful people of your church, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we're gonna move announcements to immediately following the service. So stay tuned. What we're gonna talk about is our 8 a.m. regathering update as after we talked uh, last week, the vestry met on Monday. So I wanna update you about that. I also wanna talk with you about what we're planning for Christmas Eve. Um, so if you wanna hear about that, just stay on a bit longer. Um, are there other announcements other than those two topics that we need to make? If you know of one, um, just unmute yourself and let me know. And this is Chris. I'm not sure everyone got the announcement about the change for today that Denise was making. Oh, yes. Um, Frank, is Denise next to you? Does she want to say anything about that? <sighs> Yes. So I want to apologize for canceling the Advent wreath making today. Um, but I hope that we will be able to still enjoy having Advent wreaths. If you would like a wreath or supplies or candles, please um, send me a note or a text and we will make sure that you get them. I will also say for those who are planning to use your um, the form from last year that we used that D Denise led us through, or if you were planning to participate in the Advent wreath making this afternoon, if you need greens and don't have a source of uh, greenery on your property, feel free to go to Trinity and clip what you need because there are, there are plenty of um, holly and you know, green trees around that you can take some clippers and just clip a few things for yourself. So don't, don't feel shy about going up and getting what you need. It's absolutely fine. Is there anything else that we need to talk about this morning? Okay, we'll get into the other announcements immediately after the service. Are there birthdays in the coming week that anybody would like a prayer for? Just un un unmute yourself or... Raise your hand and hold it up. And I'm, I'm scrolling through your pictures right now. All right, I'm not seeing any. How about uh, wedding anniversaries? All right, and I'm not seeing any there either. All right, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. And very good message. Thank you.
Into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, everybody. Um, let's just get into a couple of announcements. Um, so, going with the theme from the sermon this morning, the vestry.